pray. Father, thank you that we've made it to the middle of the week. Thank you that in spite of how we feel and the stuff we've said all week long, and perhaps even what we've even believed, I'm so grateful that there's still a word. There's still a word from the Lord, a word that will transform us, a word that will bring us into the light so that we can see that you're with us. You're with us. You are with us. And no weapon formed against us will ever prosper. And because you're with us, we're going to make it. Because you're with us, we are more than conquerors. We're victorious. And I just ask that you bless your people, whatever they have need of. Many are watching from various places around the world. Holy Spirit, we ask that you will meet them at the point of their need. Be with them now. Speak to them now. Use your servant. Open my understanding. Think with my mind and speak with my vocal cords so that your people will receive information to better themselves. In Jesus' name, amen. Praise the Lord. All right, get ready for this word. I want to talk to you about preparing for victory. And the challenge to you is to prepare for victory. Prepare for it. I think all of you are victorious. You see, victory is a part of the believer's promise. It's a part of the promises of God. You know, God has made us a whole bunch of promises and uh, you need to believe, you need to believe, you need to believe it, you need to believe it. You need to believe that added to the other things that God has promised you, victory is a part of it. Salvation is one of the promises. Yes, you know, if any man be in Christ, he's a new creature, the old is gone, and the new has become the norm for him. Well, that's a promise. But you must also believe that victory, in other words, you're going to have many battles on this earth, but you have to believe that God has the power to give you the victory and that you're going to come through it all. You're going to come out of it. You got to believe that this pandemic will be over. You know, whether it, it, the, the virus stays here forever, like some virus that's been on this planet for before I was born. Um, you got to believe that though it's there, that you're going to be more than a conqueror, that you're going to be victorious. You're going to overcome it. You got to believe that whatever life has thrown at you, that you got to believe that God will give you the victory over it. So whatever battles you're fighting, you've already won. I know it's kind of weird that this guy started out the sermon tonight saying to you, you have already won and you're looking around, you're like, what is he talking about? I've already won. <laughs> Don't you see that it's a battlefield, it's bloody around me? Well, you are more than a conqueror. You see, salvation was promised to you as well as healing, peace, and prosperity. It's promised to you, healing, peace, and prosperity. It's a part of the package along with being victorious. But added to these things, added to the healing, salvation, peace, and prosperity, victory is one of the promises of God. We have the victory over every battle we will fight in life. I need you to know that victory is only possible if you desire to have it and you are prepared for it. If you are preparing yourself for it and if you believe that it is your desire, you want it, you want it real bad, you will have it. You will have it. But you see, if you don't believe that you can be victorious, if you don't believe that God wants you to win, and if you don't believe that you stand any chance of winning, then it's possible that it won't happen. You got to want it. You got to want it. You got to want it. You got to be so passionate about it. 
You got to live your life every day saying, I am going to win. I don't care what the setbacks are. I don't care what the enemy does. I am going to win. You got to tell yourself that. I'm going to win. I'm going to be victorious. I'm going to win when it comes to my health. I'm going to win when it comes to relationships. I'm going to win when it comes to parenting. I'm going to win when it comes to running a business or being a worker at a, uh, um, at a job. I'm going to win in ministry. I'm going to win in my faith journey. I'm going to win, you know, uh, dealing with this crisis, this coronavirus. I'm going to win dealing with the chaos in my life. You have to tell yourself that. If you don't tell yourself that, there are voices that will tell you other things. And if you're not careful, you will believe it. You got to tell yourself that you're a winner. You got to tell yourself that you were born to be victorious. If you're on social media or on YouTube, you need to type that in. I'm born to be a winner. Yes, I'm born to be a winner. And somebody need to know that. That's why you need to hit the share button and get as many people to listen and watch what you are currently hearing. You post that. You say, I'm born to be a winner, born to be victorious. You got to wake up every day telling yourself that. I am victorious. I am victorious. You say, well, it, uh, that sounds crazy. Well, you know what? There are words, words are creative. They can change the atmosphere. And if you tell yourself that I am victorious, it will take place. You got to want it. Not only want it, but you got to prepare yourself for it. You got to prepare yourself for it. If you're going to travel, say, next week, you know, nobody can travel right now on vacation, but I hate to bring this to you, but let's say you're going to travel. You're going to spend, you know, um, a week away, you know, and just chill and so forth. And if you're like me, when this coronavirus is behind us, I'm going to have fun. <laughs> I'm going somewhere. I'm going to find me an island. I'm going to sit on the beach. I'm going to have fun. And all you religious people who can't believe that people die and go to hell and he's going to be on the beach. See you later. I'm going to have fun. What? If you're not careful, this crisis will stress you out. So I'm going to take a break. So if you're planning to take a break like me and you're going on vacation, say next week and so forth. If you're planning to go on vacation, you got to prepare for vacation. If your flight is next Tuesday, you can't be sitting there Tuesday morning. Oh, I forgot I'm going to fly today. No, you start planning now. You start packing now. You start thinking what you're going to wear all these days. And if you're like some ladies, they're going four days vacation. It's like they're going for a whole year. Praise Jesus. Don't shout me down now. I'm telling you, most of you ladies don't know the bell captain at the airport just laughing at all of you all because, you know, when he... <laughs> <laughs> when they check you in, they look, they're going for three days and you got 15 bags. They're like, okay, she ain't coming back. Anyway, let me get back to the sermon. So what I was trying to tell you, what was I trying to tell you? I can remember. So what I was trying to tell you, simple this, if you're planning, if you're planning to go, you got to prepare for it. So if you're planning to be victorious, you got to prepare you got to prepare for living a victorious life. You have to prepare as if God has already done it. You got to prepare as if you're walking in the blessing, you're walking in the favor of God. You got to prepare yourself. Are you hearing me? You got to prepare for it. And some of you are just not prepared. You are living in defeat and you're living as if life is going to be the way it is forever. But you got to prepare yourself. You got to tell yourself, Lord, I'm ready. So what battles are you fighting today? Prepare yourself for victory. What's stressing you so that you're unable to be at your best in life? So many of you are stressed out and um, you're not at your best because you're not preparing to be victorious. You see, when you tell yourself, OK, this too shall pass. I'm going to get through this. I'm going to win. In the end, I'm getting out of debt and I'm working towards that. 
I know I'm going to have a life one day. I don't have to worry, worry about where the next dollar is going to come from and is my bills going to be paid. I, I'm, I believe I'm going to be victorious that, that, that one day I'm going to say, okay, all of my debts are paid off and this. I, I believe it. I have faith. You got to believe it. You got to believe it, man. And you got to live that way got to live that way. You got to live that way every day saying to yourself, God, I trust you. And Lord, I just know, I know you're going to work things out. I know that you want the best for me. You want the best for me. So therefore I'm going to live my life to the fullest. I'm going to get up every day saying, this is the day that the Lord has made. I will rejoice. I will rejoice in this day. Thank you, Lord God, that things are going to get better on the job. Thank you, Lord, that things are going to get better at home. It's going to get better in my place of business. It's going to get better when it comes to my health. It's going to get better when it comes to dealing with these children. It's going to get better when it comes to dealing with politics or whatever. Even in America, it's chaos. It's, listen, listen, if you don't live in America, I'm telling you, it's crazy over here. It's crazy over here. But you know what? It's going to get better. I'm not panicking. You know why? Because God is in control. He is in control. So therefore, I'm preparing for the uncommon opportunities that God's going to birth out of this dysfunction. So do you not know that you are being victorious? You are being victorious. That you, being victorious, is a manifestation of you having a blessed life. You being victorious is a manifestation of you having a blessed life. Because if you're victorious, you know that God has already paved the way for you to live the good life. And a lot of times as Christians, we don't talk a lot about that. Because for some of us, the good life is just be a Christian, be good, live on the earth and be nice and just pack your bags. That's the only time you pack bags is when you want to check out of here to get to heaven. My bags are packed. Now, some of you, you're home. And I can tell you, if I walk up to your front door, I tell you what, I see it. I, I know where your, your, your bags are packed to go to heaven. I know you're packed a long time. You are just ready to go out of here. You're just preaching the rapture. You're ready. You're ready for the skies to bust wide open. About two nights ago, we had some heavy lightning and thunder here, and it woke my dogs up. It woke me up, everything like that. Now, some of you, you heard it. You jumped up. You said, oh, Jesus, I'm ready. I'm ready. I'm ready. Ready. Really? You're not going anywhere soon. (laughs) I hate to disappoint you. you got more years to live on this earth. Therefore, you have to live the good life. You don't want to hear that? There's good life on the earth. I understand that you're going to have some issues, but God wants you to live the good life. Therefore, you have to prepare for that. You got to prepare that one day you're going to have joy. You're going to have peace, man. You got to believe that one day you're going to look back and you're going to tell your grandchildren about what you've been through. Because that's exactly what's happening now. There are a cloud of witnesses on the earth and we're reading about them in the Bible of the great things that they have overcame. And you and I can do the same. You are already victorious even before victory is manifested. The thing that I like about being victorious is It starts with believing you are victorious before it actually happens. The moment you believe it, I'm victorious. I know I'm victorious. I know I am victorious. The moment you say it out and the moment you settle it in your spirit, because it's one thing to say it, but saying it don't mean that you really believe it. You got to say it, but you got to believe it. And that's where victory starts. It is when you believe it before it happens. It's when you say, I'm over, I'm going to get over that issue, man. I'm going to get over that problem. God's going to fix that for me. I know what God's going to do. It's when you stand in the midst like me, and you know, you stand in the midst of emptiness, this auditorium, this, this building, this church. It's not the norm for me. On a night like this, we have a few. Uh, 100 people in Bible study on Sunday. We've got this place 
on the ground floor, you know, pretty much filled. And, you know, it's, 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 it's odd. It's different. And every time I come and I preach to you, my mind has to be set this way that we're going to get past this. This this won't be like this forever. It won't be like this forever. I know that. So therefore, I'm victorious. It's it's empty. Look at the building. Just the, the, the people you see sitting here. These are the people who make things happen so that you can enjoy the service. But it's empty. But in the midst of emptiness, I can declare God we are, oh, we are more than conquerors. We're overcomers. And one day we're going to have the reopening. And I promise you, I don't know about you, that reopening Sunday, I am so ready. Listen, I'm going to be the loudest person in this building. I'm going to show out. No, you bet. Listen, if you don't like noise, if you don't like to party, stay home. When we reopen, you stay home. You can stream. But look at here. When some of us get back here, I want to know who's in with me. If you're in with me, you want to have a big party when we reopen. I want you to type that. Count me in, Bishop. Count me in. Count me in. We're going to make a joyful noise, not a confusing noise, a joyful noise. We're going to serve the Lord with gladness. We're going to come before his presence with singing. We're going to enter into his gates with thanksgiving into his courts with praise. We're going to bless his name. We're going to shout this roof off. So in the midst of it, my mind is already set. My mind is at reopening date. That's it. My mind is there. Now you can sit there and some of you, you're watching it, you're looking and sometimes when you see the camera, you know, in the building and you're thinking, oh, oh, that place looked lonely. Oh, that's weird. You know, will they ever fill that place up again? Well, no, I'm not thinking that way. We got the victory. We're going to have a better reason to give God praise. Ah, We're going to have a better reason to thank him because when, when he gets us through this pandemic, I'm telling you, man, I'm going to be the one to shout. And I just want to know if you're in Somebody just, I, I'm looking here at my phone. Somebody saying, count me in, count me in. The rest of you watching on YouTube and, and Facebook, the rest of you just sitting there like, I don't know if I'm going to go. <laughs> but there are many people, many people just say, count me in, Rev, count me in, count me in. Some of you are chickens. You're scared. Praise God. You're scared to praise the Lord. You're, I'm not telling you now, but when this is behind us, Ooh, glory to God. Notice when it is behind, I'm expecting it. I'm expecting the victory to manifest itself. So therefore I'm speaking it before it is manifested. That's how you ought to live your life. Are you hearing me? So you need to know that victory cannot be achieved without being in a contest, a fight or a challenge. How do you want victory and not be in a position where you're fighting for it? You can't win something if there's no contest. You can't overcome something if there's no resistance or if nothing is challenging you. So be careful what you're asking for. Okay, Lord, I want the victory. I want the victory. Okay, so are you willing to go into the fight? Are you willing? Think about that. You can only have victory when you're in a battle. You can only have victory when you're in a battle. Are you hearing me? When you're in a battle, fighting, telling the devil, I'm going to win. Throw me your best shot. Send me what you can, but I'm going to win. Are you hearing me? And even when things are dead and looking hopeless and empty, God can give you the victory. So I want to talk to some people who feel that your circumstances is dead, like the dry bones. Can they live again? You're thinking, well, nothing good can come out of that. It's hopeless. It's empty. God can give you the victory if you believe his word. Romans 4, 17. It says, that is what the scripture means, or that's what the scriptures mean when God told him, I have made you the father of many nations. This happened before Abraham believed 
or this happened because, I should say, Abraham believed in God who brings the dead back to life and who creates new things out of nothing. Did you get that? Let me read it again. That is what the scriptures mean when God told him. I have made you the father of many nations. This happened because Abraham believed in God. He believed in God who brings the dead back to life and who creates new things out of nothing. Wow. Who creates new things out of nothing. So all of you who are fighting to be victorious in every area of your life, it's important for you to know that God is the one who is securing your victory. He is securing your victory. Therefore, you don't have to worry about it because like Abraham, he believed God. Are you believing God? That's the question. Do you believe God? And if you believe God, even when things are dead, God can bring it back to life. Even when things are hopeless, God can bring life and put life back into it. Are you hearing me? Deuteronomy 20, verse 4. It says, For the Lord your God is he who goes with you to fight for you against your enemies to bring you the victory. To bring you the victory. Are you hearing me? And then 1 Corinthians 15 Verse 57, but thanks be to God who gives us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. Thanks be to God in advance. Thanks be to God who gives us the victory through Christ Jesus, the finished work of Jesus at Calvary. I'm so grateful and I'm thankful to him that he's given every one of us, including you, the victory over every issue in life, every problem. So today I want to encourage all of you not to allow what's before you to cause you not to be prepared for the victory Jesus has already granted you. But you just need to prepare for it. It's coming. It's coming. But you got to go through whatever you're dealing with. Are you with me? Romans 8, 31. It says, what then shall we say to these things. What things? The trials, the temptations, the tribulations, the setbacks, the problems, you know, the chaos, the dysfunction, the stress that I'm under, you name it. What shall we say to these things? In other words, what's your response? What's your response going to be? Are you going to live in fear? Are you going to stress yourself out? Are you going to, you know, Lord, I don't know what I'm going to do. I can't handle this. You know, stress has overtaken my life. No, 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 no. What shall we say to these things? What then shall we say? What, what's the response going to be? If God be for us, who can be against us? Ooh, 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 ooh. All I want is for God to be on my side. That's all I want. I want God to be on my side, man. I want God to be on my side because when God is on my side, I don't have to fear nothing. Listen, when God is on your side, you don't have to worry about the pandemic. You don't have to worry about the issues of life. You don't have to worry about what looks impossible, looks dead and hopeless. When God is with you, he'll resurrect that thing. He'll bring you into what well, God will do something. He'll make a pathway through the Red Sea. He'll let the lion become your friend. Whatever is to devour you, he'll make the lion to, to become your friend. He'll, he'll, he'll allow you to go in a pit and in the pit, it is a promotion. You may have to go through slavery. You may have to be sold out and be betrayed. You may even have to go to prison because of wrongful accusation. But I promise you, it is in prison you will dream. It is in prison that God will use the gift that he's placed in you to promote you. 
In the end, you're going to win. No matter what stage of life Joseph went through, God used it for his own purpose, for his own good. And Joseph was victorious because his siblings sold him out and lied and pretended that he died, had faked his death. Because there's a lot of people are doing all kinds of stuff to prove a point about you that's not true. And you, you're rendered defenseless. You can't help yourself. But I'm telling you, God will give you the victory. I'm telling you, you may be sold into slavery like Joseph. In other words, you just feel like you're not your own. You just feel like you can't make decisions on your own. And somebody's got something over you. But God used it to promote Joseph. Well, he got a job and then he got into a situation where Potiphar's wife lied on him. He was thrown into prison and it is in prison. It was in prison. I don't know who I'm talking to, but there's somebody you feel like you're in prison. You feel like you've been caved in with the issues of life and there is no freedom. But could it be it is right in prison that God wants to birth your gift? It is in prison that God wants to develop you so that when you come out of prison, it is your prison experience. Glory to God. It is your prison experience that's going to help you for the future things that God has in store for you. So Joseph or Mrs. Joseph, wake up and handle it. You can handle it. You're victorious. Handle it. Handle it. You're victorious. Be prepared for your victory. Because Joseph, though he had to go through a long process, he got the victory. Come on now. Let me just point out four things as I close here. Four things we see in 1 Corinthians 15. Begin at verse 57 to 58. I love the amplified version. I'll just paraphrase a couple of verses of these two verses a little bit here for you. But it says, thanks be to God, we just read that, who gives us the victory as conquerors through Christ who loves us. Then I love this. Therefore, my beloved brothers and sisters, be steadfast. <laughs> be steadfast. Be steadfast, immovable, always excelling in the work of the Lord, always doing your best and doing more than is needed. Now, the first thing I want to show you in these two verses is simply this. One, you got to be steadfast. You got to be steadfast. If you want to prepare for victory, you got to be steadfast. You can't be wishy washy. You can't waver. You got to be steadfast. Steadfast. You got to be firm in your belief. You got to say, I'm going to make it, man. You got to be persistent. Number two, it says here, immovable. What does that mean? Not being able to be moved. So being steadfast, don't allow nobody to move you. Don't allow nothing to move you. When you firmly believe that you are victorious, you got to believe that. Let nothing move you. You get a phone call. After you confess it, I'm victorious because the enemy will set you up. You get a phone call. It's not good. Don't let the phone call mess up your thought process. You are already victorious. You find a little deficit in your life. Tell yourself, OK, God, I've already confessed that I am victorious, so I'm not going to let that move me. After you've confessed that you're victorious, there are people are going to attack you. There are things, I mean, all kinds of stuff, criticism, lies, whatever it may be. That's not going to move me. OK, here in America, your country, everything is shutting down. Everything is crazy. And then you left and your job is is uncertain. Oh, don't let nothing move you. They start calling a meeting and you get nervous and you go in the meeting and they say, well, we got to lay people off or whatever. Don't let nothing move you. You wake up tomorrow and you go into the garage and you start the car and the car won't start. Don't curse. Don't swear. Don't get depressed. Don't let nothing move you. Don't, don't let nothing move you. Don't let nothing move you. You got bills to pay. Not enough money. Don't let nothing 
move you. And you say, well, that's easy for you to say, Henry. Listen, I've lived this thing. I've lived this thing. Why do you think I preach it with such energy and passion? Because I lived it. So you got, to, you got to understand that you can win. But it's a mindset. Number three, always excel in doing the work of the Lord. So not only should you be steadfast, immovable, but always excel in what you're doing for the Lord. There comes that Matthew 6, 33, seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and things will be added unto you. That's the scripture. Always, Lord, okay, I'm going to pray, Lord, I'm going to help the poor. I'm going to do what I need to do. I'm going to render my service to society. What is the work of the Lord? To be a servant. To be a servant, to serve, to help others. It's not about just you getting the blessings from the Lord. One of the things that I've discovered, and some of you won't agree with me, one of the things I love about servanthood is that I learned that in serving, that's where I, that's where I get my blessing. Some of you just want the blessing, but you're not willing to serve. You're not willing to put in the work for the Lord. And finally, number four, be aware that God will not ignore your efforts. Read the verse. God is not going to ignore your efforts. He's not going to hear you pray. He's not going to hear you cry unto him. He's not going to hear you say, okay, Lord, I trust you. He's not going to hear you declare that you're victorious and him not respond to your cry. He will. But you got to prepare yourself for where you want to go. You got to prepare yourself for where you want to go. So my question to you is simply this. Are you preparing for victory? Are you preparing to be victorious? Are you preparing to live in your defeat and to continue to stress yourself over things you cannot change? What are you preparing for? It is so sad that some of you are preparing for nothing. I'm just taking it one day at a time, sweet Jesus. That's all I'm asking of you. Really? <laughs> Whew. Lord, there are plenty of people watching right now. They needed this. <laughs> they did. They absolutely needed this word. And I'm so glad that I wasn't afraid to deliver it. Lord, I ask that you give them the strength to believe like many of us. We've tried other things and it just not, it just didn't work. It didn't work. We, we tried worrying about things and we found ourselves getting more stressed out and depressed and not loving ourselves and losing hope. And then we tried you and realized that the joy of the Lord is our strength. We've tried to put our trust in people and we found that people will fail us. We've tried just kind of like whatever. That didn't work. So we had to come right back to you and say, okay, Lord, you won. Therefore, we're winners. And ever since our lives have taken on a whole new meaning. And I just want that for that woman that's watching. I want the same for that man, that teenager, that person who feels as if, why live? The person who's saying, things will never get better for me. I'm, I'm far in debt or in my issue that I, I, I don't see a way out. 
It's hopeless for me. Lord, help them to see that if they declare that they are victorious, it will happen for them. Have them to trust you. There is no other way but to trust you. In the end, you have the last word. So help them to have the faith to do exactly that. And Lord, I just ask that somebody, someone is watching and they just, they're confused because yeah, they somehow they stumbled across this uh, link, this platform and they just couldn't switch. And they don't know you as Lord and Savior. And I know you met them right in their living room, right in their bedroom, right in that office. And I just hope today will be the day of salvation for them, that they will cry out to you and say, Lord, I surrender. I surrender my life to you. Just, just, just help them, Lord. Holy Spirit, help them to make that decision to prepare for victory. We thank you for it. Listen, if you are that individual, you're not a Christian, you can guarantee your victory right now by receiving Jesus as your Lord and Savior. How do you do that? You confess with your mouth. You believe what you just heard and you believe that Jesus came to earth. He died for your sins. He paid the debt that you could not pay. And that you're going to make a full commitment to develop your faith, get into the word, be a part of a church that, where you can be fed the word of God. If you're ready to do that, say these words after me. Say, Lord Jesus, I'm a sinner. And I believe that Jesus died for my sins. And today I receive the free gift of salvation. And I declare that I'm born again. In Jesus name. Amen. Father, thank you for their salvation. Thank you that they have surrendered their lives to you. Thank you that all of us can truly say after this message today. Oh, yeah, we can win. We can win. And we're going to win. Bless them now. Father, we lift up our offering, our seed that we will give. Thank you for the many men and women who are standing with us to build this church. Thank you. Thank you for their financial support. Thank you for many who, as you're blessing them with their seed, that they willingly say, here's my tenth, here's my tithe. I got to give it to God. He's my only option. It's my insurance policy that guarantees me that he shall supply my every need. Thank you for their willingness. Thank you for those who are not even members, but they are connected somehow with this ministry. They're going to sow their offerings. Bless this house. Bless the ministry. Thank you that faith center is victorious. Thank you, God, that our debts are paid. Thank you, God. Thank you that you're giving seed to the sower and you're going to bless your people that they can constantly give. Bless the seed now in Jesus' name. Amen. Hey, everyone, this is Henry Fernandez, and I want to thank you so much for watching this video, my friends. And I want you to subscribe to my channel. And my friends, give me a thumbs up if you like the video. Hit the notification bell so that you'll be the first to get my notice of my videos that I'm sending out on a daily basis. And please, I want you to follow me on all of my social media platforms. And remember, you can connect with me on my website, henryfernandez.org or the faithcenterint.org. My friends, faith in your God will always move mountains out of your life.